Welcome back to Elizabeth Plants. I'm Elizabeth and today I am going to do the first story time I've ever done, I think. The first like formal story time that I've ever done. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. So I'm here with my, with my little knit blanket on my couch with a packing mess behind me. Uh, hopefully you guys don't mind, because you don't have much of a choice. Uh, I'm still getting used to the new environment, the new AC unit, things like that, so I'm hoping you guys can hear me better this time. If you watched my last video, I think I might have mentioned it in the video before that as well, both my final packing and my um, unpacking video. Honestly, I have no idea. I've mentioned it somewhere at some point, but I did not film the actual move. I fully intended to film like the boxes being loaded into the truck, you know, clips from the drive, because it's like a 20 hour drive, on, you know, pulling the boxes out of the truck. I wanted to film, you know, stacking of the plants, peeking out of the plants immediately. Nothing happened like that. I didn't film anything. Um, I do have some like clips of the drive that my sister took. I have some clips of like the apartment and other things that we did in the first couple of days. I'll insert those at the end. So if you're interested in those, watch this video all the way to the end and you get to see just some clips. There's some turtles involved, but just, just some including pieces. So the final packing video took place, uh, I believe Monday through Friday of moving week. I worked Monday through Thursday, my normal hours, if not more, because I was, if you guys aren't familiar, I'm a clinical mental health counselor. And so I was in the process of uh, transitioning some of my clients to some of my colleagues, closing out clients, meeting with my colleagues, kind of wrapping things up at work. And I was the smart one who thought, it's no problem, I need the money. I'll work right up until the move, can't afford the move otherwise, so, uh, I won't give myself any space for relaxation. And I'm the kind of person that likes to be going 24 seven, but literally cannot. If it's past 8 PM, not functioning. If it's too early in the morning, probably functioning, but I'll hit a hard stop at like 4 PM. Uh, I need a lot of downtime and I gave myself none. And that's very important in this story is I gave myself none. Zero, zip, nothing. So a little bit more information leading up to the move. The weekend slash week before, my partner and I traveled to North Carolina. We drove that entire drive. I think it was something like 16, 17 hours, uh, minus like the stops and such. And so we drove all the way there. I didn't drive because we took his car and it's uh, manual. I can't drive manual. And then he worked and we spent a lot of time in the sun. It was technically relaxing, but I'm not much of a social person. And so I was around people constantly, which isn't a bad thing. I don't view that as a bad thing, but I do know that I didn't give myself any time to recoup from that. And I know that I need it. Uh, then we drove home on Sunday, worked Monday through Thursday. Um, so I was working a lot. And on top of that, my partner uh, wasn't feeling super well. Because of that, I was doing 90% of the packing. Granted, most of the stuff that we were moving was mine and had to do with like the plants or um, my stationary business. However, I did it all by myself almost. And so we had some help with the move. My partner's mom and brother joined us and they stayed over the night before. So they came over on Friday. We also had to go pick up the moving vehicle on Friday, load up our entire belongings, everything on Friday. That included the plants. Um, I did do a little bit of filming on Friday because if you go back and watch the final packing video, all of those cuttings I filmed on Friday. And then I think I did just kind of like a final walkthrough of what I had going on. Excuse me, what the plan was on Friday. We finished packing up everything, cleaned everything. <sighs> We did so much on Friday, I don't even know how. And it also rained all day Friday. So we had like a three hour gap where it was like hot and sunny and muggy. And then the rest of the day was rain. So that was kind of sucky. And then 
evening came and it was dark. We finished packing up in the dark. And at like, I don't remember it, but it was something like nine, eight or nine. And my partner still had to load up his vehicle onto the trailer that was being pulled by the moving truck. Because again, I can't drive his car. His brother was driving separate in his brother's own car. So my partner's pulling the moving vehicle with his car and trailer behind it. I'm driving my vehicle and um, Nick's brother and mom drove separate. Uh, the night before, after we finished packing up the moving truck, they had to load Nick's car onto the trailer. And I don't remember the times exactly. I wish I would have filmed this uh, closer to the actual move. It's like a week and a half later. I want to say they started this process at like 9 p.m. in the dark. My partner's car is lowered. So it's a lowered car. It's his baby. It, it's a car to me. But it's lowered, which means he can't like go over regular bumps that like my Civic can. And it wasn't, he wasn't able to drive it up onto the trailer because it was lowered. You know what, maybe they started closer to 10. Either way, I went inside and showered. They didn't need my help. I wasn't gonna be useful. I couldn't do anything but watch. Uh, so I went in the house and showered and my partner came inside and said they couldn't get their car up on, his car up on the trailer and they had to go to the store. So they went to the store and there was nothing at the store to help. We had packed up all of our tools, our WD-40, like everything was packed and I didn't know where they had packed the boxes because I packed the boxes and then they put the boxes in the truck. I didn't know which boxes had those things that they needed in them, let alone where they had put the boxes. They didn't have anything that they needed and luckily my partner's brother had a bunch of tools in his car and they took on the struggle of lifting his car at like 11 p.m. the night before we were going to take off on a 20 hour drive. We were going to leave at 5 a.m. and they worked on raising his car from 11-ish, 10, 11-ish p.m. until 2.30 a.m. Granted, I don't know what's going on. I'm already like very anxious about the drive uh, because I was driving, I had cats with me and my bearded dragon with me and then I was knocking over to Chicago to pick up my sister to have somebody in the car with me. That alone was like a three hour-ish drive between my place and my, where I was picking my sister up. So I'm already very anxious and I, like, I, you guys don't know me as well as you think you know me probably. I'm a very anxious person when it comes to driving. I hate driving with people and I don't mind driving with the cats if it's just like a 20 minute skip over to the vets, that's fine. But my cats don't like driving. So he comes into the, we're going back to when I was in the shower. He comes into the shower, says they gotta go to the store, whatever. I go to bed, shoot him a text saying, how's everything going? Cause at this point it's like midnight and um, gives me the update, you know, they're lifting the car. It's gonna take a minute. And I fall asleep and wake up at 1.30. And I'm panicked because Nick's not in bed with me. Granted, we were sleeping on a pile of blankets on the floor, so it's not technically my bed, but he was not there with me. And so I panic thinking like, are they okay? Did something happen? Is somebody hurt? And so I texted him real quick. I tried to look out the window to where I knew they were, but I didn't have my glasses and I, for some reason, couldn't find them or didn't grab them or, I, I couldn't see them, it was obstructed or something, I don't remember, and I couldn't see them. Uh, I couldn't even see the vehicle, so I didn't know where they were. And my partner has a friend with a garage, so I thought, well, maybe there was a chance they went to his garage. Uh, so I texted him, you know, you guys okay, everybody's alive. We get a message back, luckily, fairly promptly, saying like, yep, we're about halfway done. Halfway, at 1.30 a.m. Um, and so I fall back asleep, wake up when they came back into the apartment at 2.30 and I had gotten the text update in that time that I didn't see until 2.30 basically saying like, we're not leaving at 5 a.m. However, I had to leave at 5 a.m. I have really bad vision and so I was driving my car, not by myself with my sister and I could have had my sister drive with me had I needed it, um, but I cannot 
drive at night. I've had a traumatic experience driving at night. I have poor depth perception, really bad vision, uh, particularly at night. Uh, so I had to leave as early as possible because I felt more comfortable driving in morning darkness than night darkness, uh, simply because I would be doing that driving in a more familiar area in the morning darkness versus the night darkness, if that makes sense. Um, so I was still leaving at about 5 a.m. I got up the next morning at about 4.30, 4, 4.30ish. So that was fine, that was no worry, but I had to pack up the remainder of my stuff, the stuff that I like use on a daily. I had to pack up the remainder of the cat stuff and the cats and give them medication because they get so anxious in the drive and I was anxious about the drive and they like had never driven that long in their life and the car to them was only associated with the vet. So I had to pack up them and all their stuff, give them meds in an appropriate amount of time before we left. Um, I still gave it too, too late. Uh, and then I also had to pack up my Beardy and all of his things, which if you're not familiar with Bearded Dragons, he had a lot of things. And we left, it's dark, and I was going to like, film a little intro in the car um, before I left. I was going to, you know, get, show everybody my car set up because I was gonna let the cats free roam in the car uh, since they weren't familiar with driving in a car that long. Um, I had like done up a whole thing in the car to make it safe or as safe as you can with a cat loose in the car. And I had like a whole mesh screen behind me. I could still see to drive just fine, but it was like a mesh screen so that the cats couldn't crawl up into the front and distract me while driving. And I leave without filming any of that. I didn't even take pictures. I could recreate it for you, but I will not. And I was so incredibly anxious during the first 20 minutes of the drive um, because the cats immediately got somewhere I, I had thought I had blocked off. It wasn't somewhere unsafe, it was just like behind my duffel bag and I couldn't see them, let alone, it was kind of dark out so I couldn't see them to begin with, but I couldn't even try to find them. And they were crying, which I, that's to be expected. I expected them to cry, but it was hurting me so much that they were crying. And, Cause they sounded like they were in pain and I was worried because I, I knew that they were somewhere I couldn't check on them, not while driving. And so I pulled over to a gas station maybe 20 minutes into the drive, um, into the first three hour trek. And it's dark out and I've got my phone flashlight and I'm trying not to open up anything in the car. I don't want a cat to escape. Um, they don't wear collars. Uh, I'd put their harnesses on them, but they can slip out of their harnesses fairly well if they want to. So I, I couldn't guarantee that their harnesses were still on. Um, I found them tucked into the very back of the trunk and I pulled them out of where they were, tried to block it back up again, and then I took off again. I, again, very, very anxious. It's starting to get light out, but I'm still like panicking because the cats are at the very back of the trunk again. And I don't like that. Uh, the only car accident I've been in, it was the front of a car into the rear of a car. And like that, had that happened to me with the cats in the car, they would have died uh, considering where they had snuck to hide. And they wouldn't stop sneaking there. I kept stopping and pulling them out and trying to do a better job and they, they wouldn't stop. Um, so I left them there for the rest of the drive from Grand Rapids to the Chicago area. I hated every second of it. Hated every second of it. The sun finally came out. I was stuck in a lot of traffic, but I almost got rear-ended. Luckily, the car that was behind me was paying attention at the last second, but they almost rear-ended my freaking cats. And so I'm panicking while driving in not Chicago, but like Chicago suburbs. So there's a lot of traffic. Um, when we finally get to my sister, to picking up my sister, like it's full day now. It's like 9 a.m., 9.30, 9.45 a.m., something like that. And I decided to close off the trunk because it was giving me too much anxiety. The cats were gonna have to be in the back seat. I knew that they would be causing me a lot of distraction not having access to the trunk and in the trunk was their carrier. They're, they have like a hard top carrier. I knew they were gonna cause me more distraction, but it just made me feel safe. The drive was pretty okay for the most part. My cats aren't familiar with my sister. 
either of my sisters, but this sister in particular. And Simba is not very nice to strangers he doesn't like or doesn't know. And he doesn't like most strangers that he doesn't know because of um, a bad vet experience he had had when he was really, really young. And Raj is just really skittish. So the entire drive, I'm worried about, like if, some, if the cats were doing something, I'd have to handle it um, because my sister couldn't without like the cats attacking her. And then I also had the bearded dragon and he kept making noise and like freaking me out thinking the cats were doing something. So after I closed off the trunk, Simba was okay. He tried to sneak up to the front once. I was able to like shoo him back and he didn't really try and do it again. But Raja was desperate to hide. He was so scared. And I had shoved a whole bunch of like shirts and blankets and sweaters underneath the driver and passenger seat so that he couldn't crawl to the front. He's too big now, but when he was little, he used to try and do that or he had done that in the past, and I didn't want him to even try. Um, especially with them having the harnesses on, I don't know what's going on under the seat. I didn't want him to get stuck, choke himself to death, something like that. But he kept finding a way under there. He would like pull out all of the clothes and then hide under there. So eventually I put them in their backpacks. They each had a backpack, and so I ended up putting them in the backpack. But this entire drive, the cats are freaking stressing me out. I'm so worried about them, and then it didn't help. I got a text from my partner earlier on in the trip. They didn't leave until like 9 a.m. or something like that. And he basically said like, I hate driving this truck. I'm terrified, this is awful. And so now I'm worrying about him because he hates driving the truck. It's terrifying, it's awful. And I'm three hours away, minimum. Like I might've been four hours away at this point. And so I'm like panicking, trying to process it with my sister. Uh, my sister is very intuitive and so she was doing her best to support me in like full panic mode. And then at some point um, in the drive, I like calmed down. Nick let me know that things were doing fine now, that it was like daylight and he was out on the highway and everything was good. Um, so mostly it was just entertaining ourselves for the rest of the drive. Cause like I said, it's a 20 hour drive. I drove from Grand Rapids to the Chicago area. It took about three hours. And then from the Chicago area, we were trying to make it all the way to Texas in the first day and then we were staying the night in Texarkana. And we did end up doing that. I ended up having to do about three hours of night driving, which was okay because I was already on a roll and it was all highway and it, there was like no traffic. So I was okay. I was doing fine. We listened to like true crime solved mysteries podcast and we loved it and it was great. Um, got to the hotel, things were fine. I had to like adjust with the cats, but because the guys and Nick's mom were so far behind, uh, they didn't get to the hotel in Texarkana until like 2 a.m., 1.30 a.m., something like that. And I had to stay up to let them into the hotel. So I had to stay up with them trying to, it was like a suite, so there was two bedrooms that my sister was on the pull-up bed. And I had to like adjust the cats, take care of the cats, teach them how to use their mobile litter because they would not eat, drink, or poop on the entire drive. Um, so I had to like feed them, water them, make sure that they went poop, things like that, get myself ready. Um, luckily we weren't in a rush the next day, so the next day went pretty smooth. But the next day, after we took off from the hotel, I needed to stop and get gas and I forgot until uh, it was kind of cutting it really close. And then while we were really cutting it close, getting to the gas station, um, I'm hearing a lot of noise in the back seat. Like there was a lot of noise going on in the back seat. My beardy, when he's stressed, does like laps and like was scratching at, because he had a soft carrier, he was like scratching at the mesh and just like running back and forth on his little heat pad and like throwing his food everywhere. Like he was not having a great time making a lot of noise, but he was making a lot of noise. And then there was different noise and he was behind me so that my sister who's in the passenger side can see him instead of like like easier. And so I was like, you know, is that noise, is that noise fella? And I was doing that a lot, just checking in on what the noise was in the back seat so that I wasn't distracted while driving. Um, that gave me a lot of calm. And she was like, yeah, um, fella's, fella's out of his carrier. And then she goes, uh, yeah, and so Simba's out of his carrier too. And in my head, that's a, that's a no. That's a no-no, that's a red flag. I do not trust my cats with Fella. 
Granted, I would trust Simba more than I would trust Raja because Raja doesn't know how to not use his nails and Simba knows how to not use his nails. Um, but I was terrified that the cat was going to eat the beardy. I was terrified that the beardy was going to escape the car or get stuck somewhere. And so I, I like immediately pulled over on the highway, you know, blinkers on or hazards on and fixed the situation. And it was pretty much just traffic and driving all the way to the apartment. But we got, because we took our time the second day having been up late the past two days, we got to the apartment pretty late. Because we got to the apartment pretty late, um, I couldn't really show you much. We like got to the apartment, did like a super brief tour. It was a Sunday, so the apartment office was closed. They couldn't give us a tour, so we wandered around a little bit. We had to like try and find my sister and I arrived maybe 40 minutes earlier than the guys. And we had to like try and find somewhere for them to unload the truck after figuring out where the heck the apartment was and where there were doors and where there was parking and what was allowed and what was not allowed. And then we had to like escort them in because we had the keys and then also get Nick's brother to guest parking, which we had to find and discover. And um, it felt very rushed and I was extremely stressed and we were all exhausted and we were all so stressed and trying to manage each other. And it, just, it was not a good situation for anybody. We were all cranky. Not great. Uh, not great at all. We finally unpacked stuff. I stayed in the moving truck and just kind of pushed things to the edge and like stacked things according to weight. And because we had like a, a hand cart, we also just had a bunch of people taking handfuls. And so I was, you know, doing stacking from the truck. And so I didn't actually see where they put the plants in the apartment. I did a quick video while in the truck and I'll insert that now. You can kind of see where the plants are in the truck. We had like half unloaded at this point, but I didn't, I didn't film or nothing from that point on. I actually didn't even look at the plants for two days. All of the content you see of me checking on the plants happened two days after we moved in and nine of the 10 boxes had been stacked in front of our patio door and our patio is covered. So they weren't getting, they don't get a ton of light in this room. It's this room that they were in. And some of them were like behind each other. So like they were not, they were either getting a lot of light or they were getting none. And then I had one box that was over here, which is like the dining kitchen area. And I didn't know it was over there until I was unpacking other stuff and saw it underneath everything. I moved it into the bedroom and you would, would have seen that in my most recent video too. So needless to say, I didn't do anything I had planned to because the moving process was stupid. I usually love moving. I'm weird. I love moving. I love packing. I, unpa I love unpacking, but I had overexerted myself to the max and then not taken into account the stress the cats might have given me. Um, they gave me a lot more stress than I expected. And then to get home a lot later than we expected, to get everywhere a lot later than we expected. I just survived for about five days after we arrived and during, that's all I did is I survived. I filmed absolutely only what was necessary. I had people in my house and I just, I love the people in my life, but I am a very, 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 very introverted person. So having people in my house, which is already a mess, I'm not able to organize it. I'm not allowed to like create my own little nest. I'm not even like, I wasn't even sitting on my couch because people were always on my couch because they were sleeping on my couch. And um, it was just, it was too much for me. I was extremely, extremely overloaded. We've been here in the apartment alone now for two days. And the first day was great. That was yesterday. We went, we did a little bit of exploring. We swam in the pool. Uh, and then today, three days now, actually. So the first day we explored, swam in the pool, blah, blah, blah. Um, yesterday, we kind of did some relaxing, swam in the pool, blah, blah, blah. And then um, my throat started getting sore yesterday, which is a little bit unusual for me when I'm more down. I usually don't get a sore throat but I think it's just allergies in our old apartment. Like we had no access to outside, couldn't win open the windows, anything. And in this new one, um, we can open the windows, the patio door, we have a patio, we've been outside a ton. 
and I guess it's allergy season. I don't usually have allergies, so I don't know. Um, but I guess it's allergy season, so I'm having some serious allergies, like sinus drainage down my throat, making it raw. And this morning I woke up and it was awful. It was absolutely awful. Uh, I'm still feeling extremely drained right now, a little bit feverish. Um, a fever is usually what happens when I overexert myself for too long. I usually have a three day fever. This is day one of the fever. I haven't actually checked my temperature. It just feels like a fever. So I'm just gonna assume it is. But my throat feels a little bit better today. That's kind of where I'm at and why my videos have taken way longer than I expected to get done. Uh, because I filmed them later, it took me longer to edit, uh, my brain's not working properly. And now I have the lovely job of trying to find a job so that I can pay my bills. Because anybody who doesn't know how licensure works for counseling, I'm only licensed in Michigan, meaning I can't counsel from Texas without getting a Texas license, which is a whole process. The states have two different requirements, so I have to take a couple more exams here in Texas, and I can't really afford the exams right now. They're very expensive, and I haven't studied. I haven't had time to study. I don't have the energy to study. So I'm putting a pause on counseling for the moment. And I'm just gonna get an administrative job or a work from home job or something like that. If you'd like to support me in my move while I'm unable to counsel, Liking this video and subscribing would be extremely, extremely, extremely helpful. I really don't make much money uh, on YouTube. I do not even make enough money for what I put into the videos. So I net negative on these YouTube videos and it would be extremely helpful if you could subscribe, like the video, engage with everything, comment, and also watch the ads. That would be so, so, so helpful. But yeah, if you like this story time, give it a thumbs up. I'm looking at the clock though and I know this is a long video, so if you've still stuck around, thank you so much. Give this video a like, subscribe to see more houseplant content, and now I will roll just some of those clips that I did manage to take in my first weekend during the move. See you next time.